Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this afternoon's virtual lunch meeting with the JCN. The title of today's event is Discover the Power of Silver Dressings with AG Oxysalts, the Evolution in Managing Infected Wounds. And I'm very proud to welcome our two speakers, Helen Luxme. Good afternoon. I hope you're both well. Hi, good afternoon. Great, great to see you and thank you so much for your support. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, both Helen and Luxme, even though Luxme has the greatest virtual backing I think I've ever seen, um, are delivering this event from home. So if we have any uh, technical issues, please bear with us. I promise you we'll get them sorted as soon as possible. The event's live on Facebook now and we'll stay on Facebook. We'll also put it on our JCN website, which is jcn.co.uk. Uh, the link for the certificate of attendance, which goes towards your revalidation portfolio, will be made available towards the end of this afternoon's event. Um, please get involved, ask comments, um, or make comments, ask questions. I know both Luxme and Helen will appreciate that. It makes the event more vibrant, more relevant. And I promise you we'll endeavor to answer as many of those as possible towards the end of this afternoon's event. Uh, before I start, um, a big thank you to our partners today, 3M. Without your huge commitment to independent education, to product education, these events simply would not and could not happen. So a massive thank you from me and the team. You know, and also your commitment during incredibly challenging times, unprecedented challenging times in the NHS around research, around product innovation, product development is absolutely crucial to the healthcare professional and their patients. So please keep doing what you're doing and thank you again. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to today's first speaker, over to you, Helen. Thank you very much. So thank you for joining the virtual lunch meeting today. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about wound infection and in particular wound biofilms and why they are so difficult to treat. And I'm gonna pay particular um, focus on silver dressings and how the different types of silver which we can incorporate into silver dressings can really affect their efficacy, but also it can affect the, um, how the dressings react in the wound environment and how they promote healing. I'm gonna focus on a new silver technology called silver oxysalts. And this has been incorporated into the dressing Keracontact AG. It's a novel silver technology, and I'm going to discuss how effective it is against biofilms, but also that it can create this favorable wound environment for healing. So before I begin, um, as with any 3M medical device, it's important that the healthcare provider consults the instructions for use and any other relevant safety information. So let's begin with the patient. There are many reasons why a patient's wound may be slow or fail to heal. And it's important that we take a holistic approach into treating patients with delayed or non-healing wounds. When we consider the wound environment, there are a number of factors within the wound itself which can prevent or delay healing. This includes the amount of extate present within the wound, whether there's persistent or heightened inflammation, and as a result is the increased protease activity, which is damaging the wound tissue. And of course, the bacterial bioburden or biofilms present within the wound. And that's what I'll discuss today. So before I discuss biofilms, I want to briefly mention planktonic microorganisms. What this term means is free floating single cells. So you can think of these as the bacteria that's in the milk when it's gone off, they're free floating bacterial cells in a suspension. However, a biofilm is different. A biofilm is a community of microorganisms that have come together and they've adhered to a surface. So in the case of wound healing, this is when the microorganisms come together and they adhere to the wound bed. They then secrete this extracellular matrix. It's composed of extracellular polymeric substances. It's that slime you see around your bath plug. It's that um, matrix which acts like a protective blanket to the biofilm. And of course, the bacteria within the biofilm, they're sessile, they're not very active. And so all, for all of these reasons, it means that the biofilms have increased tolerance to our immune response but also to antimicrobial therapies. 
So when um, considering biofilms within wounds, why are they difficult to treat? Well, firstly, the bacteria are adhered to a surface, so they're not just simply removed through irrigation. Secondly, they secrete this extracellular polymeric substance, this protective blanket. And this means that the bacteria within the biofilm are, um, are able to evade the host immune response, but they're also more tolerant to the antimicrobial therapies. We also know that bacteria within a biofilm, they exhibit slow growth. And this is really important because many of the antifreatin fast growing bacteria. So the bacteria within a biofilm have adapted, they've slowed their growth, meaning the antimicrobials are just not as effective. And finally, we know biofilms can reform very quickly. So even with the robust antimicrobial strategy with sharp debridement followed by antimicrobial um, topical antimicrobial treatments, if a small pocket of bacteria or biofilm remains within the wound, this can very quickly form a mature biofilm. So we know that potent antimicrobials are required for effective antibiofilm treatment. So today I'm gonna to talk about silver as an antimicrobial agent. And metallic silver is inert, it doesn't have any antimicrobial efficacy. It must become ionic silver to gain this anti antimicrobial action. So what do we mean by that? Look at the schematic diagrams here. The one on the left shows metallic silver. It has a nucleus surrounded by 47 electrons, a single electron in its outermost orbital shown at the top. So this is metallic silver AG0 and has no antimicrobial action. It needs to lose that electron in its outermost orbital to become ionic silver or AG1+. And when it does so, it's unstable. It needs to pull back an electron to become stable. And it can do so by pulling back the electrons from the bacterial cells. So it scavenges these electrons from the bacterial cells. And in the process, it disrupts the cell wall. It'll interfere with DNA replication and it can disrupt enzymes and proteins, which are essential for the survival of the bacterial cell. So by ultimately scavenging these electrons, it causes the death of the bacterial cell. But today I'm talking about a novel silver called silver oxysalts, or another name, silver oxynitrate, and the chemical formula AG7NO11. And unlike any of the traditional silvers which are incorporated into wound dressings, this is a novel type of silver. When it breaks down, it not only produces AG1+, but it also produces AG2+, and AG3+. So let's go back to that schematic diagram here on the left. You can see it shows metallic silver, AG0, with that single electron in the outermost orbital. When it loses an electron, it becomes AG1+. And of course, this is what we see in all our traditional silver dressings. However, the silver oxy salts, they lose a second electron to become AG2 plus and a third electron to become AG3 plus. So with three electrons missing, it means that the, the, um, the silver needs to pull back three electrons to become stable and therefore can be more disruptive. If we look at the scanning electron micrograph of the silver oxy salts, this shows them before they're exposed to any fluid. And this is where the silver oxy salts are stable. However, once fluid is applied to them, the silver oxy salts start to break down. And so as they break down, they produce this AG1+, 2+, and 3+. In the process of the silver oxy salts breaking down, they produce oxygen. And we'll come back to this towards the end of this talk. But they also, as I've said, produce these three what was termed valent states of silver, AG1+, 2+, and 3+. And the AG2+, and AG3+, have what's termed greater reduction potentials and greater oxidizing power. But what do we mean by that? Well, this is shown by the E number at the bottom, the electron potential. The greater this number, the greater the affinity to pull back electrons, and more power that silver has to be disruptive to bacterial cells. And you can see with your traditional silvers with the AG1+, has a much lower electron potential 
than the AG2 plus and the AG3 plus. So Lemire and co-workers went on to say, well, if this is a more powerful type of silver, surely you need less silver to be effective at killing the bacteria. And this is what they went on to show. They took biofilms of E. coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Staphylococcus aureus, and they treated them with all different silver compounds, which is shown along the bottom of the graphs here. You can see the silver oxysalts in the blue bar, the AG7NO11. And what they assessed was what is the minimum amount of that silver that's needed to kill the bacteria within that biofilm? So the more powerful the silver, in theory, the less silver required to kill the, to kill the bacteria. And they found that a much lower level of the silver oxalts is required to kill the bacteria within a biofilm compared to the other silvers. So this silver has been incorporated into the dressing Keracontact AG. It's an advanced silver wound contact layer, and it's composed of three layers, all of which are coated with the silver oxysalts. And because of the power of the silver oxysalts, a lower level of silver is needed to kill bacteria. So the silver content of the dressing is relatively low. And so Kaylin and co-workers went on to publish this publication in 2017, looking at how effective this dressing is compared to other silver dressings against bacteria. And they first just started looking at planktonic bacteria and they chose MRSA. What they wanted to assess was how quickly that dressing can reduce the number of bacteria within a culture. And they looked within just four hours and what they were able to show is that the Keracontact AG dressing acts fast. Within four hours, it reduces the bio burden to below the limit of detection of the experiment. And so this is a greater than four log reduction within um, four hours. They then went on to say, well, what about in biofilms? That's planktonic bacteria, but we know within a wound, the the bacteria are present within biofilms. So this time they looked at Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Staphylococcus aureus biofilms. And again, they performed similar studies treating with the Keracontact AG for just four hours to see the effectiveness of the dressing. And again, Keracontact AG was effective at reducing the bio burden to the limit of detection of the experiment within just four hours. Kaylin and co-workers then went on to say, well, what if these biofilms are made up of multi-drug resistant species? So these are species which aren't affected by antibiotics. And again, they found Keracontact AG could reduce the bio burden, could kill bacteria within these biofilms and within 24 hours. So the first question that came to mind when we started working with these silver oxysalts was, they're potently antimicrobial and they're very good at killing bacteria, but what effect are they having on the wound environment? We can have a potent antimicrobial, but it can also be detrimental to healing. So are these silver oxysalts detrimental to the, heat, to the healing process? Are they cytotoxic to the wound? So the first study that we performed was just taking human fibroblasts of, so of the dermis and human keratinocytes of the epidermis and we grew them up in culture in the lab and we allowed them to form a sheet. And then we scratched these cultures. And over time, these scratches will just close as they would in your, in your skin. And so the images here on the top show um, 24 hours after we performed the scratches. The red dotted line indicates where the wounds were at time zero. And if we just look at the fibroblasts on the left, you can see the cells migrate over time and eventually these will close the wound completely. So we treated these scratch wounds with either just media control media or media containing the AG oxysalts. And if we just look at the fibroblasts, you can see there was no difference in the rate in which the fibroblasts closed these wounds. However, what surprised us was when we looked at the keratinocytes. What we found is that the wounds treated with the oxysalts actually closed quicker than the control media. And this is all independent of infection. So there's no infection within these cultures. 
So the AGLC salts are having a direct effect on the migration and proliferation of these keratinocytes. So we then said, well, does this happen in an actual wound? So to test this, we took mouse wounds. These are incisional wounds. And we treated them with either a control dressing, so a non-antimicrobial control, or the keracontact AG dressing. And these are, again, uninfected wounds. So although they're not sterile, they're uninfected. And what we did is we measured the wound area, and we also measured re-epithelialization at three and seven days after wounding. And we found that with the keracontact AG dressing, the wounds were significantly smaller than the non-antimicrobial control at both three and seven days after treatment. We also found that there was an increase in re-epithelialization confirming what we found in our cell culture assays. So why is it that these silver oxy salts promote healing independent of infection? Well, if you remember at the beginning, I said, as the silver oxy salts break down, they produce oxygen. And we know oxygen is required for wound healing. There are, it's required in many different aspects, many different cellular processes of the wound repair process. And we know that systemic and topical oxygen therapies promote healing. So could it be that oxygen provided by the oxy salts is sufficient to promote healing of these wounds? And we can tell that these oxy salts produce a gas by putting the oxy salts into an occlusive pouch and then stimulating them to degrade. And you can see from the image, the pouch will puff, puff up like a balloon. So we know a gas is being produced, but we wanted to confirm this gas was oxygen. So we applied all different types of silver compounds to a serum, and we used an oxygen probe to measure the amount of oxygen that's produced into the serum from the different silver compounds. And what we found is actually, it was only the silver oxy salts that could produce oxygen into the serum. And so it could be that the, during the natural breakdown of these silver oxy salts in the keracontact AG, it's providing a small amount of oxygen to the wound, which is stimulating tissue repair. However, there was another aspect of wound repair that I was particularly keen to look at. And that was the ability of silver to break down hydrogen peroxide into its components, oxygen and water. Now, hydrogen peroxide is a vital molecule in wound healing. It's secreted very early on when we injure ourselves, one of the first molecules to be secreted. And it tells our body, this is the site of tissue injury. This is where your inflammatory cells need to come, do to, come to to combat any infection. And at low levels, we know um, hydrogen peroxide is beneficial for healing in that very early stage of healing. However, at higher levels, we know it causes tissue damage. So hydrogen peroxide is also secreted by your inflammatory cells when they come to the wound as a mechanism of combating infection. However, when there's heightened inflammation in sometimes like in, that you get in chronic wounds, we get excess levels of hydrogen peroxide. This causes tissue damage, creates this hostile wound in, environment and can delay healing. So we looked at the ability of all different silver compounds to break down hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. And we found that a subset of silver compounds can break down the hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. And one of those compounds was the silver oxy salts. But not all of these compounds are used in wound care. So then we took a series of silver dressings and we said, can the silver dressings break down the hydrogen peroxide into the oxygen and the water? And so we did this and we found that actually only two dressings were able to break down the hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. That was the Keracontact AG and the Keracel AG, both of which contain the silver oxy salt technology. And you can visualize this if we look at the two images on the right here. The top image shows a dressing containing just single ionic silver. And you can see it sinks to the bottom and there's no bubbles of gas being produced by the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide producing these oxygen bubbles. But what we see on the bottom is the silver oxy salt dressing. And you can see the dressing is surrounded by bubbles, which are the oxygen bubbles created 
through the breakdown of the hydrogen peroxide. So it could be that these keracontact AG dressing is breaking down excess hydrogen peroxide within the wound, which is preventing tissue damage and creating a more favorable environment. So just to summarize then, we know that in an infected wound, the infect infection often manifests as a biofilm. And we know for many reasons, biofilms are difficult to treat. We know in biofilm infected wounds, you get high levels of inflammatory cells all trying to target the biofilm. Of course, these inflammatory cells, such as your neutrophils and macrophages, they're sec secreting things like your proteases, which damage tissue, and your reactive oxygen species like your hydrogen peroxide. And this creates a really hostile wound environment, which doesn't favor healing. In addition, these cells, these neutrophils and macrophages, they're high consumers of oxygen. So they can deplete the wound of oxygen. And again, we've mentioned it, we know the importance of oxygen in wound repair. With the Keracontact AG dressing, we know it's effective at combating bacteria. We know it's effective at reducing bacteria within a biofilm, and it does so quickly. We also know it can reduce inflammation within the wounds. So in our uninfected mouse model, which I showed you earlier, we also measured the neutrophils and macrophages that were infiltrated into the wound. And we showed that independent of infection, we also see a reduction in neutrophils and macrophages. So it has direct effect on dampening inflammation within the wound. We know it has the ability to break down any excess hydrogen peroxide within the wound. And also it can produce oxygen, not only through the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide, but also through the natural degradation of the AG oxysalts. And we know the AG oxysalts have a direct effect on the keratinocytes to promote reepithelialization. So while all of these small changes can come together to create a much more favorable wound environment. There's not one big change, but it's making small changes to the wound environment, creating a favorable environment for healing. So thank you for listening to the science behind silver oxy salts today. I'm happy to take questions with myself and Luxme. Thank you. Helen, thank you. Um... It's absolutely fantastic. Um, there's been some fantastic comments and questions coming in on a variety of different platforms. So I'm aware we're pushed for time. So what I'll do is crack on with the questions now, um, if that's okay with you both. Um, so question one, Luxmi, like, mean, this is for you. What types of wounds are you using Keric Contact AG on? Thank you so much, Ed. And uh... First of all, as tissue viability, we've been using uh, the Keracontact AG on quite a lot of stagnant wound that has been there for quite a while and not moved despite all other appropriate dressings. And we've also been using it on uh, biofilm in most of our wound that we debride and then we put Keracontact on. Fantastic. So basically, you're looking at most chronic wounds. Brilliant, thank you. So nice to meet you again. What secondary dressing can I use with Keracontact AG? I would suggest check with your local TVN and local formulary, but I can tell you what I have used in my area. So with Keracontact, we've used a super absorbent when we use it under bandages. We've used something like Keramax. We've also used it with a form dressing. And in both occasions, we've had good results. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Helen, back to you. Uh, question three. Um, does the dressing need to be pre-moistened before application? And if so, with what? Yeah, good question. So no, you don't need to pre-moisten the dressing. But as with, with any silver dressing, regardless of the technology, silver only works if it's exposed to fluid. So if the wound is dry, you will need to pre-moisten the dressing. What we recommend is with, with sterile water. And the reason for this, as with any silver technology, is that um, if you use saline, that the, the silver can react with the salts within the saline and form silver chloride, which can precipitate out and reduce the efficacy. So not unique to the silver oxalt dressings, but as with any silver dressings, we would say pre-moisten if the wound is dry and only if the wound is dry and preferably with sterile water. 
Brilliant, thank you. Um, so question four, I'll probably ask both of you, Helen, maybe you from a scientific point of view and Luxmi from a clinical point of view. Um, when would you think about stepping, stop using silver dressings like this one and what would you step down to? Yeah, it's a, another good question. So I think you need to take an overall approach of assessing um, what's going on within the wound originally. Is it infection? Is it inflammation? And so it, we would always treat for infection be first because we know that if infection's present, you're not going to reduce your inflammation. Um, and so we would always say trial for two weeks. If you're not seeing a result with the silver oxalts, it might be persistent inflammation, which is the problem. And in that case, you want something to modulate and something like your Promogran or your Promogran Prisma. Fantastic. Luxmi, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, in the practice, basically, when we will stop it, but, uh, my experience with silver oxysol, like correct contact mostly, is we haven't had to use it more than two weeks because you see the evidence, the action in, in life in front of you where the wound bed has improved. But we always step down to a, a lower antimicrobial because obviously every trust have got their own protocol on silver usage. And again, because of the antimicrobial stewardship. So we would stick to two weeks of silver. But with Oxysol, we never had to use it more than two weeks. Fantastic. Um, Luxemi, this is for you again. Um, how do you position Kera Contact AG in your trust? It is on the specialist formulary. And uh, obviously, this is available to our community nurses to use because we work very jointly with them and our podiatrists as well. But once we identify, like, obviously, as I say, it's a step up where you not nothing else is working. We've got stagnant wound colonization or heavy biofilm where we've correct the wound, we've put the, the correct contact in there. So it is positioned on the specialist formulary, but our nurses, community nurses, know that they can initiate it if they want after discussing with us or the podiatrist. Okay, brilliant. So question for Jane to you again, Laxmi. Um, in your experience, what education and support is required for understanding and implementation for Care Contact AG in your trust? And what level of partnerships with 3M do you have? It is very, very important to make sure that we know as clinicians that we shouldn't be working alone. And I'm glad that I have that support. So obviously when you're talking from a clinician point of view, it's a fab dressing, fab technology, we know it works and everybody will want to use it. But when you're talking a bit more strategic level, you talk about cost and everything. This is where you want staff to use it appropriately. So it's being used properly and not misuse or abuse. And this is where we got the company to come in, do a drop-in session with our district nurses, attend our wound care study day so that they know that this is a product that can stay in place up to seven days. So even if your patient is like requiring three times a week dressing, you do not need to take it off three times. So this is where education was key. And I'm glad that we got the support from 3M because the moment we got that on, we didn't see any overuse or misuse of the products. Brilliant, thank you. I think uh, that partnership with industry has been pivotal across the Absolutely. community, I think, since I got involved 25 years ago. And I think it's often underestimated by certain individuals. And I, I think, you know, that key role around educating around appropriate use is so important now and I think even more so in the years ahead. Um, Helen, next question for you. How long would you use a dressing for wear time? And also how long should you use silver dressings um, for until you reassess their effectiveness? Yeah, so as Luxmi's already mentioned, the, the dressing has a wear time of seven days. So it's got uh, up to seven days wear time. It can be used cumulatively for 30 days. Um, but obviously, we would always say, you know, if you're not seeing results within two weeks, then you need to reassess. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so question for Helen from Julie. Thank you, Julie. Are there any contraindications? Um, so, yeah, uh, MRIs, obviously, um, again, we would ask you um, to, uh, to consider the wounds, any allergies to silver, again, not to use, but um, you'll find all the information in the, the IFU. Fantastic. 
Um, Debs, thank you for this question. This is for you, Luxmi. Can the dressing be used on diabetic wounds? Definitely. And we have been using it on our, our diabetic foot ulcers alongside our podiatrists as well. And uh, what we've saw, the, the initial response we saw was actually reduced re use of antibiotics, but also the wound progressed very rapidly. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, the questions are coming in thick and fast to my right. Sorry if my eyes keep panning this way. Um, Lakshmi, so if, this is from Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, in the community, we don't have sterile water. Can you use tap water or boiled cooled water? I, I, I have been using boiled cooled water, yes. Fine. Helen, would you agree with that? I think if that's your option, yes. I mean, you can use saline. Um, what I would just say is that it can reduce the, or the thought is that it can re reduce the efficacy. We haven't, it's not been trialled on silver dressings to see whether saline would do that. But in theory, um, silver chloride could um, form from the precipitation. Thank you. Um, so Adela has asked a question of Helen. How does honey dressings compare with this silver dressing? Yeah, it's a good question and we, we haven't directly tested them and, and partly the reason is, is the way antimicrobial um, assessments are set up. So for things like um, the culture studies that we do, it depends on the absorbency and the, uh, of the dressing. So even comparing different types of silver dressings can be different. You've got to look at the substrate because that can make a difference. So directly, they, uh, we haven't assessed them to the silver oxy salt. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I'll ask this of both of you because I'm not sure, it's probably for you, Helen. Can the dressing be cut? Yes, it can, yes. Yeah. So it can be used either side and it's cut and can be conformable, I think. I don't know, looks me, do you want to speak to the conformability because this is one of the changes in the dressing more recently? Yeah, so I've used both the previous and the new version and in both we've cut slits because if you've got like heavy exudate, it allows the exudate to go through and get into your secondary dressing, which could be your super absorbent. And uh, this is how the primary can stay in place for up to seven days. In terms of conformability, it actually um, more to the um, shape of the wound and it's not as rigid as the previous version and patient felt it was much more comfortable when we applied it on them. So it, it was very comf um, comfortable. Fantastic, thank you, Luxmi. Um, and this one's for you as well. Um, do you need to use it in a specific orientation on a particular side? No, I think Helen just um, um, said that. And I think this is the beauty with care eye contact because sometimes we are scared of getting it wrong. But this one, you can use it either way, which is, you know, fabulous for us community, especially if you've got a new staff going in. And a fairly critical innovation, going back to you know, presses around pricing, cost, and making sure the, you know, the product is used appropriately. Um, so next question, Helen. Does care eye contact AG adhere to the wound bed? No, it shouldn't do, but again, I'll hand over to Luxmi and her um, when she's had any issues with adherence. Thank you. No, actually, thank you, Helen. But I, I can say that obviously the, the, we're talking of the new one and we haven't had any wound adherence at all. And even on removal, where it has done the job and we got new granulation going, you can see that it doesn't stick with the granulation tissue. So it was very easy to remove uh, and uh, with no trauma at all. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Helen, does the dressing stain the skin? No, again, it shouldn't do you. You can rub it and get some silver, which will come off on your fingers. But again, it doesn't cause this long term staining of the skin. Not that we've had reported, but again, looks me. Hand over to you if you've seen in your clinic any staining of the skin. No, as you said rightly, when you're handling it some time like with your sterile gloves, you will get it if you rub it. But when you pay, put it on patient, because it's not being rubbed on patient's skin, it's just being applied gently. When you take it, even if, if you're taking it after seven days, you don't have that black silver mark that I've seen from other products being left. Fantastic, thank you. So Helen, we have our first biofilm question. How do AG oxy salts disrupt biofilm and does the silver penetrate? The biofilm. 
A really good question. You know, there's often the myth that antimicrobials cannot penetrate a biofilm. Um, but, you know, biofilms have channels to, to import nutrients and excrete waste products. So antimicrobials can penetrate the biofilm. But partly the biofilm, um, you know, we think of it as a bit like a layer of an onion. Within a biofilm, only the outer layers are proliferating. And that's what silver is really good at, at, um, at reacting with those proliferating bacteria. So it can kill those outer layers and then go down to the deeper layers, exposing more layers and peel the biofilm off like layers of an onion. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, Lakshmi. Does the dressing cause stinging like some other silver dressings? Not as far as uh, it's been reported or from my clinical use uh, myself. Uh, we haven't had any patient reporting that it's causing any stinging to them. Helen, do you want to yeah. add to that? Yeah, just to add to that, I mean, there are, um, there are comments about silver causing stinging. It's a particular type of silver, silver oxide, which causes stinging. And that's because during the natural breakdown of silver oxide, it produces a hydroxide ion, which, which increases the pH of the wound. And that's what causes the stinging. The silver oxides, we've tested the shift in that pH and it doesn't cause an increase or a spike in the pH. Um, so you shouldn't see stinging with the silver oxides. Thank you very much. Um, Helen, this one's for you again. Um, are silver dressings with higher silver content as effective as Kera Contact AG or more effective? Yeah, so not necessarily is the answer, is that that depends on the solubility of the silver. So, you know, you can think of it as, um, we, we often show these vitamin C tablets, one which you swallow as a tablet and one which you put in um, to water and it fizzes and dissolves. And that's just showing you two different solubilities. You can get silver just like that. Some are not very soluble. So no matter how much silver you load onto the dressing, there's only a certain amount that will become soluble. Um, so the solubility is really important. The good thing about the silver oxalate is it has high solubility. Thank you. Um, okay, so the next question, Helen, for you, um, which is a question we hear all the time at the JCN. Um, is there a concern of silver resistance developing in the clinic? And if so, is there any evidence to how effective silver dressings are against silver resistant bacteria? Yeah, it's a really good question. There was a, a paper by Finlay in 2015, which looked at clinical isolates from a trauma unit. And I think they, they tested over 800 clinical isolates and they found about eight which had silver resistant genes but only two of them actually displayed silver resistance by being able to grow in high concentrations of silver. And yet it was, they were still able to show that the silver dressings, including the Keracontact AG, or I should say some silver dressings and, and Keracontact AG was one of them, were able to kill these um, silver resistant species. So yes, they do exist. Um, are they clinically relevant? Um, probably not right now. Thank you, Helen. Um, Luxby, how long would you use the dressing for if you see the wound healing is not progressing? So every dressing should be reassessed after two weeks, ideally, as part of best practice. So we would use it for two weeks and reassess. And if we think that it's not, then this is where we will reassess the whole wound bed and the patient holistically. Thank you. Um, Luxby, again, for you and probably you, Helen, as well, um, so I think it's a plea for help. How can I access this silver dressing as I think it's not included avail available on our formulary currently? Uh, so, yeah. You go, Helen. Uh, yeah, so I was just saying we can get um, someone to, we can get the contact data or leave it and we can answer that question at the end. We can get someone to reach out to you. Uh, I can also add that it is available on the FP then, so it can be prescribed and very often if you document your rational to your GP maybe and ask, tell them why you need it and how it works rapidly and the efficacy of care and contact AG, it, it is something that I know GP hasn't refused to prescribe. So in clinical practice or if your TVN themselves, you know, can have the uh, uh, as part of their specialist formula. Fantastic. So guys, that was our last question. Um, certainly on a personal level firstly thank you to you both the comments that are coming in some very kind words so if you get a chance look back at the event i think you'll be pleased 
I think from a personal level, it's been a very important session. I think innovations like this are crucial in the UK wound care community. And I really appreciate the opportunity for you guys sharing your experiences of this product. Um, you know, I, I'm well aware how much work has gone into this, both of you. So thank you so much for your time and the efforts, not just over the last 45 minutes, but over the last few days and weeks. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the link for the certificate of attendance is now available. That should be shared on the screen. It will also be shared by my good colleague, Sam, in the comments bar. Uh, for events like these, please visit the jcn.co.uk website. There's loads more information on Carrot Contact AG. So again, on the screen now and in the comments section, there should be a link to the relevant set section. Please go there. Please ask any questions uh, of 3M or us in the coming days or weeks. Um, our next event is on the 13th of July. Um, it's called Nursing Student, the Community and You. So please feel free to join us then. Um, so that concludes our event. A massive thank you again, Helen Luxmi, uh, for your support and for your kindness. You. Again to 3M for your partnership and for your commitment to education. It means a great deal to me and the team, so thank you. To the teams at Mole and the JCN, I'm well aware how much work goes on behind the scenes. So thank you for your support and your expertise. And last but not least, to you guys who joined us today. Um, your commitment to education like this to the JCN uh, keeps us all getting up in the morning and keeps a passion in the team. So thank you. Stay safe, stay strong, and we'll see you all very soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.